One component that you'll see in many places throughout Microsoft 365 is the Fluent2 Persona component. This component displays information about a user and is often used to display things like a person's name, job title, department, or location. Standardizing these sorts of components to follow Microsoft's design language can help your Power Apps feel integrated and cohesive with other applications that your users interact with in Microsoft 365. So in this video, we'll add another Fluent2 component to our toolbox. Channel members have access to download the apps used in the videos, as well as the YAML code used in the components that I showcase. You can click the Join button below the video if you're interested in supporting the channel. We'll start by looking at the Persona Fluent2 component documentation. As I mentioned before, the Persona is a representation of a person that includes some additional contextual information. These Persona components usually include a picture, and they can include a presence badge and up to four lines of text. One design cue that we'll implement in our component is that the text slots in the Persona should wrap to the next line when the container becomes too small. The Persona component does include a presence indicator, and this can be accomplished in Power Apps by using the Graph API. In this video, however, we won't be focusing on this presence component, as it reduces the portability of our component when trying to use our component across different apps. Microsoft includes a note about the content of the Personas, and is basically saying that these should be brief and filled with at-a-glance information. You don't want a lot of text here, and it should really be kept to a single word or a short phrase for each of the text slots. In Power Apps, we'll start by going to our components, and we'll add a new component called Fluent2 Persona. We'll start by inserting our controls into the component, and then we'll come back later and add our custom properties and relate those to each of the controls in our component. The first thing we'll add is a horizontal container, and we'll go ahead and set the X and Y values for this to zero and the width to parent.width and the height to parent.height. We're gonna change this height later to be dynamic, but for now, we'll just set it to this value. We'll go ahead and turn off the drop shadow for this container and we'll set the vertical alignment for the container's contents to center. While we're here, we'll also change the gap to eight. We'll also rename this container to Container Persona. Now the first element of our persona that we're going to insert is the avatar control. And this will show the profile picture of the person we're displaying in the persona. We'll go ahead and name this AV Avatar. For this component, we're gonna go ahead and change the badge to none so that we don't display the presence of the user. Now there are some ways through the Graph API that you can pull in a user's presence using Graph API calls. However, to keep this component portable and usable in any app, we'll remove the presence indicator. Next in our persona container, we'll go ahead and insert a vertical container and we'll rename this to container fields. This container will have all of the fields associated with our person that we're trying to display in our persona component. For this container, we'll set the alignment in the container to center, and we'll come back later to change the height to make this dynamic. We'll keep the flexible width option enabled, but we'll change the minimum width to zero. We'll also scroll down and we'll disable the drop shadow for this container. Now in this container, we need to display four text fields, one for our name and three for our primary, secondary, and tertiary labels. So we'll go ahead and insert those text labels now, and we'll rename them appropriately. Now there are some settings that are gonna be common between all four of these labels. So we'll go ahead and select all of these, and then we'll set those now. The vertical alignment for all of these will be middle, and then we'll set the width option to stretch with a minimum width of zero. We'll also enable the auto height option. Now for our name text, we wanna make some changes to this to differentiate it from our other three display fields. So we'll go ahead and set the font weight to semi-bold. For our primary, secondary, and tertiary labels, we'll go ahead and change the color of these to this nice gray color. And that way they have a nice contrast compared to the bold text of the name. 
we'll also change the font size of these to 12, just so they take up less of the user's attention. Now we'll go ahead and make our component dynamic. So we'll select our fields container and we'll insert one more vertical container inside of this container. We'll call this container auto height, and then we'll disable flexible height and set the height to one. We'll also disable the drop shadow and set the minimum width to zero. Now this auto height container is always going to sit at the bottom of our container fields. So we can go to our fields container and set the height of this container to container auto height dot Y. As our text inside of the container expands, it's going to push our auto height container further down. And that way our fields container can always expand to show all of the text inside it. Now we can go to our persona container and for the height of this, instead of parent.height, we can take the max value of either container fields.height or our avatar image of the user. We're going to implement some dynamic sizing for all of our component here so that we can have some predefined sizing. And that way, if our avatar is larger than our text, we can still have the height of our component choose the taller of those two things, whether it's the height of our text or the height of the image. So with that, we can see our persona container is perfectly sized to accommodate both the text and the avatar. So now we'll add our first custom property in order to auto adjust the height of our actual component. And we'll call this property auto height. And this will be an output property of type number. We'll select our auto height property, and then we'll set the value of this to the height of our persona container. So now that we're outputting that value, we can set the height of our component then to self.autoHeight. And now you can see the component automatically resizes itself to the proper height. At this point, let's also just shrink the width so that it looks a little more proportional. And that can of course be changed when you insert the component onto a screen. So at this point, we have our controls inserted. We have our component dynamically resizing itself. And now we just need to add custom properties and tie those custom properties into our controls inside the component. So that's what we'll do now. The first custom property will be name, and that will be a data input of type text. We'll select our name property, and we'll just set the default value for this to name. We'll select our name text label, and we'll replace the text value of this with fluent2persona.name. So now you can see name is displayed in our name label. The next custom property will be one for avatar. And this will be a data input of type image. We'll set the default value of the avatar to user.image. We can then go to our AV avatar control and we'll replace the image for this to fluent2persona.avatar. After that, we can also change the name property to our fluent2persona.name. When there's no image displayed, it'll take the initials from the name displayed in our name component property and show those as the person's avatar. Next, we'll add our primary, secondary, and tertiary text labels. And these will all be data inputs of type text. And we'll set the default values of these appropriately. With those custom properties added, we can go to each text control then and switch out the reference to text with fluent to persona dot primary text, secondary text, and tertiary text. So now you can see that our component properties are tied to the individual controls in our component. The last custom property we're going to create is one called size. And this will be a data input of type text. If we take a quick look back at the Fluent documentation, we can see for the avatar size that a persona supports different sizes, with medium being the default. We can see that for the most part, from small to the large size, the text stays the same size until we get to extra large and huge. The size property can range from small all the way to huge. 
And what that does is change the size of the avatar as well as the size of our name text, depending on the size input into the control. So for the default of the size, we want to set this to medium as that should be our standard size for this control. We'll go to our avatar first, and then we'll go to the height property. Here we'll use a switch statement to switch on the value of fluent2persona.size. Now when our component property is set to extra-small, we want the height of the avatar to be 20. If it's just small, we'll set it to 28. If it's medium, we'll set it to 32. If it's large, we'll set it to 36. Extra-large will be 40. And if it's huge, we'll set it to 56. And as a default value, we'll set it back to 32. Now we'll copy this entire switch statement and we'll set our width as the same switch statement. Now in the Fluent2 documentation, the avatar is always top aligned to the persona control. So we'll go ahead and set the alignment of this to the start so that it's always at the top. Next, we'll go to our name text label and we'll go to the font size property. Now in all the font sizes except extra large and huge, the size of our name text should be 14. We can use a similar switch statement to our avatar control, switching on fluent to persona dot size. If the value is extra large, then we'll set the font size to 16. If it's huge, we'll also set it to 16. And the default value otherwise should be 14. With that, our component should be done. So let's go over to our screens and we'll try to insert it. Under custom, we can see our Fluent2 persona. And we can see it displayed here on the screen. When we select our control, we can see our custom properties over on the right hand side that allow us to put in a name and some primary, secondary, and tertiary text. Let's try now to change our size of the component to something like extra small. We can see our component resizes itself so that the avatar is much smaller. And if we change it to something like huge, the avatar takes up more space and our name text resizes to a bigger font size. Since we're using the auto height property on our primary, secondary, and tertiary text, when we remove the text from these, we can see that the height of our component resizes itself automatically, since the height of those text labels is now zero. Let's also see what happens when we remove the user.image from our avatar property. You can see it now switches to some initials from the name that we provided in our name property. If we decrease the width of our component, we can see that the text of our component now shrinks and we're presented with some scroll bars here. Now, when we're in the editing view in Power Apps, the auto height doesn't always recalculate itself immediately. So we have to navigate to another screen and then return back to our original screen to see the updated height. For the avatar property, we can also connect this to the Office 365 users connector. So we'll go ahead and add that to our app. With that connection added, our avatar property can now be set to Office 365 users dot user photo v2. And here it asks for the user principal name or the ID of the user that we want to retrieve the photo for. So in this case, I'll just put in my email and we can see it grabs my image from the Office 365 users connector. You could also do this with the name property with the Office 365 users. And at the end of this, we can insert the display name to pull this directly from Office 365. We can copy this same formula for the display name and go to our primary text to display something like a job title. So instead of the display name reference here, after the period, we can select the job title. Again, for the secondary text, we can say that we want to display the department. So instead of display name, we'll point this to the department property. And then if we don't need the tertiary text, if there's nothing that we want to display there, we can just remove that and the component will resize automatically. We'll put our size back to medium 
and here we have a very standard persona that you'd see across many Microsoft 365 applications. And that's about it. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about the component or if you have any improvements or ideas that could make it even better. The persona is a pretty straightforward component, but I think it's just another step in creating these Microsoft 365 components that aren't available in Power Apps, but that are used so widely across the 365 platform. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and have a great day.